Hi, hello! What's up, Jelly Cups? My name is Crispy Jelly, and today we're beating Rush to Purity Mode in Soul Knight. Soul Knight is a mobile game that I like to play on my phone, and Rush to Purity Mode is a <laughs> altered boss rush mode for Soul Knight. Boss rush is kind of how it's described, which is, you know, rushing bosses of the game. To start out, I'm going to use the Alchemist because it has the best ability, which is Gas Grenades, which do a lot of damage to bosses, as well as one of the best passive abilities, which is Immunity to Poison and Additional Poison Boost, which goes super well with its ability. My Alchemist is fully upgraded because I've played this quite a bit, and that makes it extremely easy for me to destroy bosses with it. Let's get started. So first I grabbed the Alchemist and I had to throw away my starting weapon, but fortunately the Rush to Purity Mode gives you a pure version of your starting weapon once you go into it. So, with Rush to Purity Mode activated, because I didn't have any weapon or anything, I grabbed my pure starting weapon, as well as a laser fish, which is great, because those have freezing capabilities. As you can see, there's also a time limit for this mode, which means if I don't kill the bosses fast enough, then it's all for nothing, which is why I chose the Alchemist, because he burns through bosses. So, the first up is the Giant Crystal Crab. The Giant Crystal Crab can be kind of annoying, because it has healing capabilities, where it like shells up and then heals, which is not great for me, because if I'm poisoning it as it heals, it heals a lot. I was able to take it down fairly easily once I got a lot of poison around it, and it didn't heal after a while. I was also able to get its boss weapon, which is the Crab Katana, which is not bad. And using the money I got, I also got a buff for my ability, which makes it to where I can heal when I use my ability. After beating the boss, I also got the shotgun buff, which increases the amount of bullets that my gun shoots. Which is perfect, because I have a shotgun. Next up was the Snowman King. Now this guy's annoying because he has freezing capabilities, so a lot of the bullets he fires can freeze me. Which is extremely annoying when you're trying to go for speed, because you need to be able to move, and I keep getting frozen in this section. But luckily I had a sword, which can take down a lot of the bullets, because melee weapons destroy the bullets of the enemy. And yeah, I was not in too great shape from that particular fight, but I won, and it was not too difficult. For this buff, I got the no damage when shield is broken effect. Which is super useful because that means if they do 5 damage and I'm only at 1 shield, that means I only take 1 damage. So it's perfect. That's kind of a last resort buff, but it's extremely helpful. It's a lifesaver. I also picked up a buddy of mine. He's going to help just to distract the bosses and keep them off my tail because dang, they like to burn me. The next boss was the Colossus. See, the prehistoric Colossus is extremely easy for me to defeat because he's a stationary guy, which means he doesn't move around or anything. As long as I focus on dodging all the stuff and not hitting giant rockets and arrows like I was, then he's pretty easy to defeat because he can't get out of my poison. In addition, something I forgot to mention was that the shotgun buff that I got earlier also increases the amount of shotgun gas grenades are shot from my ability. So it's doubly useful. From there, I moved immediately on to the next boss. With the time limit going, there's no real waiting for this, so I have to immediately rush from one boss to the next. And I can only get things that I deem are useful. Like money. Haha. <laughs> Hello! I like money! Alright, next boss was the Easter Bunny. He's kind of annoying, kind of not. It really depends on what he fires first. He has both freezing and fire capabilities, as well as summoning abilities. However, the summoning is not too bad because of my AoE attacks, which means that anything he summons just kind of dies. And it was very quick. The buff I got from him was a instant regeneration buff, which means if my armor is depleted, I immediately get 50% of it back. However, it only triggers every 60 seconds, which is not too often in this particular mode because I have a time limit, so it's only like a total of, I don't know, 12 times if I last till the end. Anyway, Graveguard Scarab Arkin. This guy is a hassle to deal with because he has a regenerative shield like me which means if you don't kill him fast enough, the fight could go on for a long time. However, luckily, as I said before, the poison is extremely useful at tearing bosses apart, so when he's standing in the AoE attacks, he just kind of melts as I destroy him.
after defeating him, I got his boss weapon, which is extremely cool, because it is a circular melee weapon that also has the capability of summoning. So when fully charged three times, it summons a little beetle guy, which as I said before, minions are good at distracting bosses, which is great, because when they're on my tail, I take a lot of damage, and that's not what you want. The ghost boss is not too difficult. It has summoning abilities, which is not really fun, and it also has a disappearing ability, which is much more concerning. I need to be able to constantly deal damage to these bosses, because if they get away, that's a lot of time wasted. I also lost my buddy, Rip. However, he didn't disappear fast enough and I was able to kill him. And then I moved on. I also got an extremely useful buff, which makes me immune to collision damage. Which means if I'm accidentally running into these bosses, I don't take additional damage. Which is perfect. Next up was the Dark Grand Knight. Now this is an extremely rare variant of the Grand Knight, and he is even more difficult than that, unfortunately. However, his boss weapon is one of the strongest boss weapons that I know of, and extremely useful. Now, <laughs> as you can see, he killed me there, but through the power of money, I was able to revive and live to fight again. I got him. Not only that, I got his boss weapon, which is, again, one of the strongest boss weapons I know of, and it was perfect for boss shredding. So with that, I went into 2-4. Now there are a total of three worlds and five levels in each world, and I was on 2-4, I was making pretty good time. Now I met with the Nyan. The Nyan has summoning and fire capabilities. As you can see, I was driven to very low health because I went really close, but you can also see that I was absolutely shredding this boss, and he's dead. And it's gone. He does not have a boss weapon from what I remember, but even if he did, I would not take it because it probably wasn't as good as the one I just got. I also got a buff that makes elemental damage do twice as much on critical hits, so that was pretty useful because of my AoE attacks or elemental. Now we're on world 3, and this is where the annoying bosses come in. So we have the baby dragon bros. These guys are a double bosses, which is very hard to keep track of because there's two of them, and they have a lot and lot a lot of fire capabilities. They all love to spew out fire. Not only that, they have laser capabilities, which is not great because you can't deflect lasers with melee weapons, unlike you can with normal bullets. So with the first of the third worlds down, I had to really hope that things went smoothly, because if they didn't, then that could take way too much time to kill them, and my worst fear would be taking down a boss that could really hide from me, and make it impossible for me to take him down in time. At this point, it's not the difficulty of the bosses, it's the difficulty of the time. So the next one was really good for me, it was Anubis. Anubis cannot hide. He has no hiding capabilities, and he can't really flee. Not only that, the Dark Grand Knight's weapon has stunning capabilities, so I could kind of just stun lock him in place, and just shred him from there. So that one was extremely good luck for me. He couldn't really hide or move. But this one was really bad luck for me. Now, this, as you can see, there's an ocean biome around me, and this particular boss is the Iron Pirate King level. Now, the Iron Pirate boss is extremely annoying to deal with because he has a force field around him, which makes it where any hits I deal to him only do one damage. He also has an anchor attack where he fires it out and grabs you. Now, the way you have to get rid of the force field is make him grab onto a bomb that's been lit by you, and then from there you can attack him and deal normal damage. This gets really annoying if you're unable to get to a bomb fast enough, or if you're unable to time it right, or if he just decides not to use the anchor attack for a while. However, I was able to get him with only one bomb attack, and then from there just do one damage fast enough to him to kill him. So honestly, it didn't take up that much time, so that was a very fortunate round for that. As you can tell, I know a lot about what I'm talking about, because I've tried this so many times!
So this one was another fire boss, the Volcanic Sandworm. The thing about fire bosses is they have fire capabilities, which is annoying on its own, because fire can deal a lot of passive damage, similar to what I do with the AoE. But not only that, the fire maps also have AoE lava attacks, where you can see there's like a shifting in the ground. If I step on one of those panels, I get fire damage done to me just by walking over them, which is very bad if you're not paying attention to where you're going. I also got the boss weapon, but honestly, it wasn't really good enough for me to use at this point. So I just ignored it. With that, I had done it. I would made it to the final level. The Rush to Purity boss. Which in this case, was Sir Sangria. Sir Sangria is extremely difficult and has a force field that makes it where I have to fight his minions before I can defeat him. But, I had the Dark Grand Knight's weapons so I was practically unstoppable. started resummoning his minions again, I saw my chance and took it. With that, I won. I defeated him. However, I did not get the blueprint from him in this particular run. This was just to show off my beating of Rush to Purity for the first time. And as you can see, I won. I beat Rush to Purity mode. One of the benefits to beating Rush to Purity mode is that you can get two extremely powerful blueprints from it, from Rush to Purity and Rush to Purity boss mode. However, I did not get it in this particular run, but I did get one of the blueprints in a follow-up run I did later though. Now I just gotta beat hard mode. 